Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet and of YouTube. Welcome to Jibber Jabber. I am your host, as always, Skidaramas, otherwise known as Tone Shift. With me today, I have five fine people. We have, let's see here, we have Tom 117Z chilling out down in the British corner. Hello. He is joined by Darkness, also in the British corner. British as always, everyone. Makes a change for you to do the British corner first. <laughs> Let's see here. Staring into your soul from the background, we have Paladin. Don't forget us a pondering life. <laughs> Glaring at him in abject irritation, we have Soviet Starfish. You see, boyos, I have fine news this afternoon. I will be acquiring another firearm as of next week. <laughs> and this one isn't from the World Wars. Uh, oh, jeez, Louise. Well, okay. thank you for gracing us with guns, you gun nut. <laughs> and lastly, we have Hades, who is also here. Yes. So, how has everyone's week been, eh? Pretty good. Suck. I met an alpaca. <laughs> yeah, well, I you saw the picture about that. Alpaca. You want to you tell us a little bit here. about that there, Tom? Provide some context to the audience. I mean, there's, there's not too much to uh, say. I'm just trying to look at the picture because I forgot his name. Yeah, there's a name. Uh, the, I'm currently home. Like, during university time, I have a, a, my, my own flat where I tend to live most of the year. However, outside of semesters, I return to my parents' house and kind of chill here for a little while with my mother. In her new house, I, after wandering the area a bit, Found an alpaca. Which, Did they spit at you? Uh, no, the llamas are the ones who are more willfully spitting because they're jerks. Alpacas do it as a last result. Um, Indeed. But yeah, this is like Britain. It's in the middle of winter. It's fucking cold, and there's just like a and it's just a random alpaca, which is not something you tend to see in this country. I mean, they're not native to here, so uh, <laughs> it's a bit random. And I found out his, his name is Clarence, and he has a best friend. It was a chicken. <laughs> What's the chicken's name? No idea. I I feel like Clucky? you could make a story out of this. For some, yeah, for it some, was... uh, okay, see, for some reason, I thought the chicken was yours. I don't know why I thought that. I just thought for no. whatever reason that you why had would... a chicken that brought home an alpaca. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. If, if Tom had a chicken, I would demand that he name its he name her Scootaloo. Ha. <laughs> No. <laughs> what about Perfect if I had Rose? Chicken, I'd name it Miss... No, no, no. She's a, she's a, she's a cat bird, not a chicken. <laughs> well, this chicken didn't lay an egg, but it brought her an alpaca home. What about Rocket? <laughs> I can imagine that. See, Lumina's not oh, here, so on. I can say that. <laughs> what about <laughs> Missile? Naughty, naughty man. <laughs> she's gonna watch this episode. I mean, I mean is she? Is it work? She we're may do. Or we could just tell her that you said that. No. Snitch. <laughs> yes. No. I, no, no. I heard the desperation in that voice, meaning no, no, that's no. exactly what we should do, no, gentlemen. No, 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 no. I have and the man right, hammer, and I will start swinging. <laughs> right, I mean, we can still, get, we can still talk to her in private chat. Ah, fuck my life. Sideways, <laughs> with a shovel. Now it's then. true love. <laughs> Ding! Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, okay. Let's move on. We got some topics to get through today. First up on the list, we have our FFD6 recap. Of course. So. The last time I sat down, well, for one thing, I should point out that today's session actually marks one year since we started this campaign. Like, we'd been planning it for a good couple months before we actually sat down to start playing, but the 5th of January is the anniversary of the game's first session. We've been going for a one full year. year of hell. It's not hell you love it. Shut up. Considering God what you just threw at us at the end of this today's session, yes, we're going to be going through hell. This, this is nothing unusual, though. I'm so exactly. sorry I didn't hear any of that because my device is glitched. Hades is complaining about the behemoth. Right. 
Oh, well, anyways, yeah. well, anyways, the audience doesn't know about that, so I need to give some context here. Go ahead, so, context away. Yep. So, where we last left off, the last time I did a recap, the party had arrived in the city of Kurzatan and gotten themselves settled in at a local inn and tavern to start to act as their base of operations as they figured out their next moves. As, a tone. It sounds like a curse of a town. Shush. <laughs> I'm trying to talk. So. Pun, Lord. Mm. Well, anyways, so. They, th at the start of this session, after a couple minutes of being groggy and grumpy at each other, they got their shit together and went to the mud hole district of Kurzatan, the cavernous section of the city that was dug into the side of a great desert mesa to service the slums, where the only uh, road... For the, for the groggy part, I, in, my, in my defense, Miku is fluffy and snuggly. <laughs> snuggly, at least. She's not really fluffy. She's not covered in fur. Oh, there is a and tail. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. Oh my goodness! And <laughs> yeah, yes, you, we get it. Yeah, you so, keep so chasing that, that time. You keep chasing that. You keep chasing that. I ship Back. it all the way. She, she, she literally, I, mean, I, literally, literally I literally invented that character just to be your character's romantic interest. All right. Because I mean, of... you invented it from a character I invented, so we both invented it in a way. <laughs> You're just spiffing, aren't you? I mean, no, we're being totally Misty honest. Is... Mika's based yeah, on Misty Gus from Strong from... Little Wings. I'm about to yeah. say, technically, Tom made her. That's why I say Tom spiffing of... with himself. I made, I made the original concept from which Mika Solwyn was born. So. Yes, he's very heavily inspired by Misty, if a bit more energetic and spry and adventurous. Now then, and twilighting. Exactly. Hello. Now then, ow. So, the party made their way into the mudhole district of Kurzatan to try and locate a place where they could hunt for information about Fane Pharaoh, an individual who, if you'll recall, the party bumped into many, many sessions ago up north in a. The administration of La Pina, where all the Tarofel live, and where all the shit with uh, the Vinaldi poachers, and where they first bumped into and the her family being held hostage. Yes, Fane Pharaoh being their contact of sorts in Kurzatan, who also happens to be working for the enemy, though not of her own free will. She's mostly doing it because her family's lives are on the line, and essentially being held hostage to make her cooperate. So. From there, the party made their way, as I mentioned, into the Mudhole District and briefly stopped when they stumbled upon the burnt-out husk and remains of what was once Thanatos' old home, which had not been cleaned up or cleared out, save for the bodies that had been in it, even all these years later. Still just a burnt-out wreck. They briefly explored the ruins to try and, I guess, just reminisce for Thanatos, mainly, and he discovered his old bed from when he was a kid upstairs, and upon brushing away some of the caked-in soot, revealed to the party that his true name was not in fact Thanatos, but was actually Talion. Talion S. Time. Thanatos was a alias Caius helped him come up with when they met. I'll see another thing me and Thanatos suddenly have in common. Two mm -hmm. names. Yeah. Well, anyways... After a bit of moping around and helping Thanatos pull his shit together by, you know, just being there and being his friends and whatnot, the party moved on, and with him at the helm, because he knows the city, he led them to the Cavernous Deep Inn and Tavern, as it's called, which is a different one from the one they stayed at, which is in the Mudhole District. This was a very loud, very cantankerous, and very violent, shall we say, inn and tavern. Where, as far as Thanatos is aware, there are there's a precedent for periodically individuals who work for the Vinaldi family come here to share information and whatnot so that their conversations can be lost in the din of the rowdy crowd. Anyways, um, once they arrived, they found themselves a table and after a bit of thought, managed to pick out someone from the crowd who might be of use to them in terms of information gathering. One of the waitresses, an Elvon woman who visibly seemed uncomfortable at the mentioning of Fane Pharaoh. Through some clever, creative means of distracting individuals, Neathil and Thanatos were able to get the former back behind the bar and into the spare meeting rooms where... I bought a the, drink. Yeah, where the Elvon went, allowing me to follow after her to figure out what was what. Whereupon, by pure chance, Neathil bumped into Fane Pharaoh. 
almost got shot in the face, but you know that happens when you startle someone. When 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 you said that there are two female voices like speaking harsh tones in there, I didn't predict who the the waitress was, though I did kind of think the other one's gonna be Fane, isn't it? <laughs> see it now. And well, as it so happens, the waitress turned out to actually be Fane's mother, who was justifiably. Oh, wow anxious and scared about strange individuals who definitely stand out like a sore thumb in the ragged, dirty, muddy, unkempt mudhole district who are looking for her daughter. Anyways, Fane Farrow was able to assuage her mother's concerns and instruct Neothil to take her companions and go along with the favor that was to be asked of them by the guard who had let them in in the first place after their disastrously f- after the Negotiations they had to go through just to get into the city. Neothil agreed, pulled the party back together, they went back to their HQ of sorts, and a few days later, they were handed a parcel by a man named Cedric, who instructed them to take the parcel and deliver it to some individuals up north. Apparently uh, associates of his. Mm, right, associate. <laughs> right, but, fuck yeah. you. <laughs> The party took mm. off to do that, and about halfway there, they were briefly stopped by Fane Farrow herself, who was stalking them under the guise of spying, when in reality she wanted to follow them so that she could talk to them more freely, and got down and started to explain in detail some of the chaos that has been happening in the city ever since she last saw the party. Namely, that with a solid half of the lieutenants in the Vinaldi command structure eliminated from back when all that fighting took place up north, it has left a very noticeable power vacuum in a region of the Vinaldi's command structure, which has led to a lot of fighting, infighting, power struggles, and open conflicts even out on the streets. Not to mention, she herself has been kept under heavy suspicion, and most of the people she brought back from that disastrous expedition were killed to make a point that if she fucks up again or if she's not on the up and up with Chakal, she'll be next. Essentially trying to terrify her into submission. So, under as heavy watch as she is, she's having to be exceptionally careful. She talked with the party for a while to try and come up with a plan of action, a strategy to start luring out the higher-ranking individuals so that the party could take them down, Preferably without lumping too much suspicion on Fane. If there's too much suspicion placed on her, her family will probably be killed, and so will she, and she is not willing to risk that. The party came up with a loose outline of a plan. Could still use some finer tweaking, but they got the basics done before Fane decided to return to the mesas and plateaus surrounding them to keep an eye on things while they continued to deliver the parcel Cedric had entrusted to them, if only for the sake of maintaining appearances. The party followed Cedric's directions towards what appeared to be a long-abandoned campsite in a cavern that was burrowed into the side of the mountains there at the base of. And upon drawing it closer, they they discovered rotting corpses in the back of the cave, devoured by some giant angry beast, and said giant angry beast then returned to its den in the form of a young sand behemoth. It spotted the party, and with a great deafening roar, deafening and stunning them, it charged forwards, and that was where we ended our previous session. Or this session, The next rather. session's gonna be painful. Fortunately, so, I am stealth, so I am ready to am- use an ambush to get an extra damage step. Yeah, so, so, yeah. Good. The players who are there, who are now here, anything you wish to add, any observations, predictions, just anything you want to talk about? I just, uh, yeah. I just hope that none of us falls because we won't get a second life. Well, it, yeah. Oh, unless we have um eight uh, destiny points, which I do because I've been saving because I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, fuck. I wonder. I do wonder, like, how they like they they clearly sent us out to die. So I'm wondering whether they simply decide there's a odd group of individuals. I'll be well armed. They might be a Direct to us to not to die, or whether they somehow, despite the fact that we killed any all bloody witnesses, seemingly how they would have known it was us, short of oh, Fane telling them. Though Fane telling them would also mean that she clued with us, which means she will probably get killed too. So that 
is also rather unlikely. Hmm. I just checked my sheet. I only have six destiny points. Don't die. Thanks I mean, for the yeah, advice. You have enough to go out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> Which is six, exactly. Just like the fate in Final Don't Fantasy. Don't worry. If you go down while he's doing the slow action, we'll eat you across the map again. <laughs> <laughs> and Hades, uh, what about you? Do you have anything? He'd be right back. He's getting food. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, timing. Good. You see the plot point where he bitches. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, while we're waiting on him, uh, Soviet, Paladin, anything you want to add? So, so this could be I've a really I've really got nothing to add bad. here, I've, except that I suspect the guard knew what would happen as soon as he sent them north. <clears throat> mm. uh, no, no. Like, I, know I, really, I, I despise his hums, because his hum is the, I'm really smart, because I know something, and I know exactly what's going on, and your guesses amuse me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or, or someone just brought him freshly cooked food, and he's enjoying it too much. No, actually, it's, no, it's, actually it's, there, there's no food in front of me right now, but I am really fucking he, hungry. He, Thanks he, for reminding me, by the way. No, you don't understand. He feeds from our misery. This is his food. <laughs> Not a siren, dipshit. I, w- I wish I had that kind of power. Doubt. Oh, dear. No, you wouldn't. And then everybody I'm on to you. Out, out there with a the Well, you seem to forget, Tom. Sirens are supposed to be attractive. <laughs> oh. My. Attractiveness oh. is in the eye of the beholder. Luminous only thinks so. So, yeah. <laughs> To be fair, we've you know, only fair seen enough. each other's faces a few times. The vast majority of our interactions and the things we find cute are in our mannerisms and general behaviors. Like, apparently she finds my scheming cute, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> she likes your evil. Makes she, sense. She digs this schema. <laughs> oh, God. I think I need, uh, she's had a party earlier and... A you little... better not be scheming behind her back just to impress her, man. <laughs> no, I'm just being me. <laughs> Pardoning gift. One of my cousins sprayed a bottle of liquid ass downstairs. Liquid ass? There's a, there's a liquid thing liquid called liquid, liquid ass. ass? Yes. Yeah, yes. It's it's it smells like ass. Mm hmm. Yeah, I found that out thanks to Waterhouse Good News. Yeah, I did. I'm afraid of it. Yeah. It was liquid ass. Well then. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he's coming back for a while. Shy stuff. Mm. Well, we can uh, so... we can double back to him a little later. Anything else from uh, the others, though? Bomb darkness. Nah. Yeah. Well, really, aside from the only thing we've got to do now is kill a behemoth, uh, see what the fuck's going on with Fane, and then go through with our plan of. Oh wait, he's back! Right on cue, just in time. Hello. Um. Hey, what? what? What'd I do? We were waiting <laughs> on your like... opinion of the, the session. Yeah, like any yeah, thoughts you, you want, had, anything you want to point out, or... Any on. bitching you need to do. That too. <laughs> the beginning was something that I wanted to... I knew I wanted to do during this session. Like, I had already kind of poked tone multiple times about it. Yes, you did. Before, before the session. Yeah. The last name... For uh, Italian wasn't wasn't really something we we kind of just gave up and just chose something from another game because I couldn't think of a good one or at least one that Tom would let me have. Fun. And then we just said, you know what, just take this. Honestly, Italian was just a fun name that I have, and any who have played uh, Shadow of War, Shadow yes. of War. And or Shadow, Shadow, Mordor. Shadow Mordor, more or less, because the second mm-hmm. game is garbage. Yes, that is kind of who it's based off of. Well, the campaign was garbage, but they did improve the Nemesis system a bit, but then they screwed it with the boss fights with the Overlords. Mm. In my opinion. Right. Other, than, right. other than that, honestly, I figured it'd take us a little longer to find Fane. Or at least we would get we would have got jumped in the bar. After that, I had a, I didn't, I had a feeling that it was either going to go two ways. The guard was going to have us, like, go kill somebody that he didn't like, or he would have gone and just put us into an ambush. 
And I guess the second one was kind of on the spot, only it's not people so nope. that are attacking us. Is it Bumhamoth? Yes, something I did not quite expect Tone to throw at us so early. <laughs> Thankfully, it's only a wee babby. It's an adolescent. Recently left it can still kill us, though, and the sad thing is, I only have six destiny points, so if I'm down and I'm dead, then I have to start again! <laughs> you have to, well, you're gonna have to make a new character, because I, and then start again. Exactly, because there was no respawn. I mean, Final Fantasy, respawn. This, no respawn. I mean, as long... Well, it's a regular boss, so it takes a slow action to actually kill you. So yeah, as long as someone us, is fast enough to haul your body out of its range... You'll be fine. And that's assuming you go down to zero HP at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, depending on what, how much of what I, what I assume of a behemoth has in terms of like skills and magic that he gives an adolescent, it may just be a melee fighter and we may be able to deal with it. Mm. Mm. Well, but of course, Mr. I don't like to say anything isn't going to tell us. Well, of course, all I'm going to do is. All I'm gonna say, my strategy is keep the fuck away from its claws and teeth and any magical abilities and try to keep you all alive. You fought the behemoth. You know that's damn near impossible. I know, but I said the word try. Try these is things, the word I fucking use. These things I are enormous, but my yes, god, yeah. do they move. Yeah, the, they are yeah, a pain yeah, in the ass. Yeah, 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 you said try. The and fail part is silent, though, so. I mean, just <laughs> these things can run. They can jump. I know. Don't remind me. Well, I have a limit break. That does at least a guarantee to. Don't they also Wait. have an ability called Charybdis or something? I don't remember what that one does. No. No. No, they don't. No, they do not. No, they do not. Let me Google that shit because the fuck no. no, you are not. No, don't. Don't do that. I'm not giving it the ability, but I'm looking it up. <laughs> Uh, that was one of the most annoying things I had to deal with in Monster Please Hunter. Please don't. Please just don't. Oh, well, speaking of which, I got that for uh, PC. What, Monster Hunter World? Yeah. Nice. Just need mm -hmm. the frame rate to do it. <laughs> yes. Two enemies you're going to have to deal with that are going to suck. The Behemoth is one, and then there's the Ancient Leshen from the Witcher uh, add-on. That mm. thing is a pain in the ass. Yeah. I recently yes. bought the first. I think Witcher all game, behemoths which, uh, are pain in the ass. So I recently bought. I recently bought the original Witcher game in like the winter sale. So after I finish nice. XCOM 2, I intend to play the entire series for the first time. Hmm. Yeah. Just bear in mind the Brilliant. first. The first game is exceptionally clunky in just about all of its aspects. Well, it was I mean, made. So so is Dragon Age Origins. It was, also it was clunky, Age. but it was fun still. It was, the second one was be it better. It was made like l so long ago, Tone. Yes, it's going to be a little clunky. The, I, mean, the I mean, even one, for the, the time, it was clunky, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second game is a little less clunky and. Mm. But it's still it's still pretty decent. It, it, it's significantly um, better than The Witcher 1 in terms of the gameplay. Hmm. I can't really speak yes. for the story because I never got far enough into The Witcher 1 to really figure out how the story was handled there. Uh, the, the Witcher 1's mm. storyline's a little eh. The mm. Witcher 2 is when you really start to get into the plot of me it. Of all the And then we get guys, to the third one. selling this really well. No, 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 Tom. The, okay, Tom, the first game will be a little bit of an eh to get through. I, I'll, I'll tell you that. The second game mm -hmm. will be a lot better. The third game is a masterpiece. It will swallow exactly. you all. Yes. It was well crafted. It's beautiful. The music on point. I will make my own. You, you get to have a hallucinogenic conversation with your horse. <laughs> That's that, that, I love that. I fucking, I fucking I will, love that. I will make my own judgment on the series as I play through it. So I remember there was another... If anyone plays Gears of War in here, I remember I yeah. last series got recommended to me to death. I never fi finished the first game because it was boring as fuck. <laughs> okay, ge okay, Gears. I I can tell you, Gears. The story is eh. The only reason I really play them is too much is just because my friend does. I, I bought all three for a deal of seven pounds. Like, ah, I've heard a lot. I right, this has been recommended to me to death. I'll play it. I played the first game. Like this was year. This initially was years ago. 
the first couple of missions got bored, didn't touch it for another few years, went back to it like a month ago, tried to do it again, got bored, stopped again. <laughs> mm. Again, I Gears say Gears is, is more of just friends. something to play with friends rather than yeah. the actual yeah. campaign. I just the found the challenging boss I found was one at the end of the first one. The worst like, from... the oh god. Um, I mean, the, the gameplay was just fun. fucking die, you big bastard. But frankly, like, the world was just grey and boring and lifeless, and the story basically surmounted to there's a bunch of r- overly disproportionately muscular men fighting sorts of aliens. Men. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man! So we've, yeah, they... so, so we've gone into the segue right into improvisation here. Well, yeah, I mean, that was that's just the thing. Tom, <laughs> Tom will love the Witcher game a lot better than Gears. I mean, yes. I, love, I love the Dragon Age series, and I kind of like that whole thing. So, yeah. mm. It's a lot of fun. Also, speaking of Witcher, if anybody has Netflix, you should totally check out the Witcher. Oh, I've already, I already series. watched the it's entire good. fucking I am today already watching it. If, 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 I... if my family still had Netflix, I would have done so as well, but we don't, so I can't. I am but... willing to watch the first episode when we're done here again and stream it to this chat for those who don't have no. Netflix. I, I have other Netflix, shit but... I need to do, sadly, so that's a good for me. And do they be not watching it because I haven't played the games yet? And two, the, its existence is one of the reasons I've decided to actually pick the game up. Finally, well, so. technically, Tom, the 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 show is focused more on the books that the that the games came from. They Matt is like, not. Matt is not. Matt is not. Yes, but and before Tom, we jump, yeah, as I understand it, hey, hey, as, hey, as, I, as I understand it, aren't the games set after the books? Indeed. All right. Yes, mm-hmm. well, they're set like way afterward. Right? Yes. After, yeah, yeah, it's set like quite a few years mm-hmm. after the the end of the books. And the so it would actually make more sense to, to watch, watch the series first. And well, then do you know what I have to say to your sense? What? Blah. 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 Yes. You dare blah at the mighty power of I... gun. <laughs> I made the bois, so go on the fire. Your words of power mean nothing to me, a master in marksmanship. I'm afraid <laughs> you can't shoot me through a microphone <laughs> thousands of miles across an ocean, so I win. You're not, through you. Yeah, you're not fucking <laughs> Deadpool, so be it. Just I'm shoot. Just, yeah, go ahead. Shoot your own microphone and computer. See how that goes for you. <laughs> <laughs> But, but no, <laughs> seriously, anybody who is not should totally Uh-oh, check it out because it's awesome. Go. And Henry Cavill got Geralt down perfectly. perfectly. Yep. Nailed it. And on a final note, for the record of freaking first person shooters, I stick with Halo, thanks. Yeah. I say, Tom, Tom down here recently got me Halo. Reach the Me Master too. Chief collection. I got Halo Reach, Reach on Steam, and, yeah. it, and it was fucking. You know, it. It, you know, Tommy was funny because the moment I said that and to a friend of mine, he immediately grab. He, he immediately just says, "We are playing it right the fuck now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom dragged me through the whole campaign. Kind of on the shorter side, didn't have quite as much depth as I thought it would, but it was fun. I also mm. heard that the Master Chief Collection is also eventually going to get the rest of the Halo games, too. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're slowly releasing them to Steam. Yeah. Well, through the started collection. with Reach because it would make the most money. That and, you know, chronological oh. order. Yeah, they're releasing them all in mm. the chronology of the, the story. So, Which also makes sense. So but Reach, it, 1, it, 2, it, ODST, 3, it, 4. It, it, it still bothers me because um, Reach takes place pre- like right at the beginning of the Human Covenant War. So no, it doesn't. Why... Reach takes place no, 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 right no, no, at no. the end of it. Wars takes place at the mm. beginning. Reach felt falls like a month before the war ends. Hmm. Like the mm. Halo One, Two, and Three take place over like a month and a bit. A month and a bit. That yeah. makes no fucking yeah. <laughs> sense considering all that happens. A lot happens. Is she? Uh, like you have Reach taking place over like. Well, Reach itself takes place over a month or, or so. Um, over, or a month, I think it was a month or two. I think it was actually more. That's two months. Reach takes place over, but then uh, Halo One happens within the space of two days. Then right. there's like 
then there's like the space of like a cup of a few weeks between Halo One and Halo Two, which is mostly the chief getting back to Earth and then Earth being attacked. Question. And then then you have another week which encompasses Halo Two, and then the a few days after that which encompasses Halo Three. Question. Yes. If it's called the Master Chief Collection, why start out with a game that doesn't have Master Chief? It, because <laughs> there, there's, there's actually a funny achievement based on that. In the Easter egg in the final cut scene in the uh, hangar, if you move the camera to the right, you see Chief in his cryopod. The achievement that pops up say, see, we are eligible for the collection. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, I'm going to have to probably go get that at some point. I love um, that. Because I love that. Like, uh, yeah. She's like, yes, it technically has a Master Chief in it. I mean, um, I would just like Halo a lot more if we stop playing as Spartans uh, all the fucking time. Of yes, we know your opinion on Super Soul. Uh, there's, I feel like there's one more that made it off of Reach, one other Spartan. Well, you oh. don't always play the Spartan. I mean, you did play the Armiter. In the second yeah. one? No, from Noble 6, there was one that I believe made it off of Reach 2. June. June, June yeah. made it off. And then there was also a bunch of Spartan 2. So, but... but they kind of, I believe they like this, like cut them out of it. I don't know why. Nah, what do you mean? I'm gonna cut. I'm going to have to finish that. What, what do you mean cut them out of it? June's final, June's final cutscene in Halo Reach is his leaving with Dr. Halsey. And that's the last time we see him, where, in actuality, the actual pseudo-canon that has never been directly addressed in the book, he has been seen afterwards, but the developers sort of said that he, after being split from Halsey, defending her from some hunters, which there was a comic about, um, he ends up climbing up an orbital elevator that's barely intact and about to collapse, reaching a pelican in time, pelican or condor or something in time, and j- jumping it randomly out of the system before it collapsed. Shortly after Noble Six's death. That's hunters, how it. hunters are those ones with the shields, right? Yeah, yes. the big guys. Big worm boys. All those. Okay. The worm, yeah, the worms in yeah, armor. Because uh, they are composed of like these worms. And they get low. Oh. Yeah, and scarabs are made of the same thing. Yeah, I, I yeah. can't remember where we stopped. It was a few missions in. Mm. I remember like, me and uh, Tone there for a couple, like, Found out the hard way that you kill. Well, you found out the hard way. You kill one, the other one gets pissed off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It goes for you. When it comes oh, to first-person I... shooter games, I'm generally not into first-person shooter games most of the time. Because you know, a lot of them tend to feel exceptionally samey. Like a lot of the time, you've played one, you've played all of them. The vast majority of the time. Uh, Basically, Call of Duty. Like, yeah, pretty much. Like any yeah. modern military shooter is a hard pass for me at this point because no, thank you. Know. you. Um, the only ones that have really stood out to me are, like we've been saying here, Halo. Um, hmm. But more than that, largely because I never had access to Halo until recently, more than that was the Crisis series. Because hmm. I, I fucking love the nano suits. Those things are awesome. They are cool. I can't, I can't wait for us to get to... I know you played Halo 1, but I can't wait for us to get to Halo 2 and 3, because Halo 2 oh, and 3 is also a bit of a part 1 and 2, because Halo... Two, they ran out of development time because it was incredibly strict. They kind of made half of it and they made the rest of the second half in three. Mm. Even though they're decent, Halo Two is decently long anyway. Mm. Well, I still, this is just my best. opinion, of course. The the okay. other first person shooter like the series, one the, most, the other series of first person shooters that I happen to really like is the Resistance series on PlayStation. Uh, and I wish, I wish really hard that they had put out another one to kind of wrap things up because it kind of stopped at Resistance 3. Uh, but I'm actually really fond of the Resistance series largely because, because, well, for one thing, the aesthetic and setting of it is really interesting because it's alternative history in that it's sent set like in the 50s or something. Mm. And, uh, but it's about, uh, Essentially, uh, an alien invasion that begins through a virus, the Chimera virus. Like, how many people are familiar with it from here? I am. Um, I had all the special editions. I know it had something to do with the interrupt. I believe it interrupted one of the world wars. I don't know for sure. But what I do know is that, for one thing, I love the design of the Chimera. Just all of their various sub-races are awesome looking to me. Mm-hmm. I like the kind of horror-esque tone it took. 
It's sort of, mm. you know, it's scary. It does approach. have its difficulty moments as well. I it mean, can be difficult. Yeah. And it lastly, up, and lastly, the part, know. but but more than that, the part that I like the most is that, as realistic as it can be, being an alien invasion thing, it's actually relatively realistic in the sense that we fucking lose. <laughs> Humanity does yeah. not win that war, which is how it would go down in the event of an actual, like, legit alien invasion, I feel, because we are just mm. not prepared to deal with something that Every technologically advanced. We can fight back, for sure, but especially for considering the technology of the 50s when it was all going down, there is not a chance in hell they could win, and it worked, proved to be the case. Humanity I got mean... fucked. Yeah. Which is basically XCOM 2. <laughs> Right. Well, SCOM 2 Actually, follows all if you fail the... SCOM 2 is like an all the timeline where in SCOM, in SCOM 1 there's a story mission where the aliens invade your base and you have to defend it. SCOM 2 follows a timeline where what if you fucked that mission up? Hmm. Hmm. Don't forget and there's also the, the first XCOM that also came out on the Nintendo 64 if I recall. Uh, where no. basically that one is incredibly hard. To be fair, Although I know nothing help. really about XCOM other than it's about aliens and ridiculously high difficulty and percentage numbers that mean all of fucking nothing. <laughs> and well, the, they won the in the old one. They technically, win, they technically win in the reboot first one because at the end it turns out the XCOM project's been shut down. They're no longer going to invest in it and all that. And they basically took over the entire fucking world in the second one and now... What well, no, I, I, and in the end, of, you got that wrong. In, I said the second one's an alternate timeline. In the end, the first one, if you do it right, you win. Yeah, out. we definitely won because Nia Phil sacrificed her fucking life for that. So don't take a victory away. <laughs> well, we and did win, the, but there was that. And then the aliens fucked us in away. the end. And she no, in the alternate, in the no, in the alternate timeline, mm. uh, in X one two, the aliens won, but Nia Phil's still alive in that one currently, <laughs> along with everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bane's still dead, though. Uh, mm. Sorry, since Bane. you brought it up, and it and I can turn it into a topic. I don't know how long I can stretch it, though. Um, you did ask about Arma modding and all of that, correct? Yes, I did, because you kind of were railing about that like uh, before we sat down for last week's. Yes. So uh, why don't you go ahead and educate us a little bit on how that went. Just talk about that a little bit. Oh... <sighs> Our, uh, before I say anything, I, I kind of have to explain how working on Arma and making custom missions work. Arma 3 is a good game in the sense that when it launched, Bohemia Interactive put in a in-game editor for the community <laughs> to use the game's assets, maps, and buildings to make their own custom missions for um, its massive multiplayer community that's how people like soviet womble for example do all of their content is they have they'll either do they'll either make the maps and missions themselves they'll have people that they work with that do it for them or they'll get ones that have been um pre-made and uploaded by the steam community and that's how they do it and that's how they'll do it however what people don't tell you about this process is Arma is no is what is known as a functioning piece of software. It does not like being messed with, and it is very difficult to get things to work properly sometimes. And that can be for a combination of reasons. It could just be the built-in AI is too stupid to comprehend what it wants you to do. That's most of it. The other part is, if you're using a, com a community-made map, most map makers aren't that good, and they forget to make certain things non-destructible. So, for instance, you'll have a concrete wall that if you tap it with a fucking bicycle, it collapses. Hmm. That's somewhat different to the recent armor video I've seen in Soviet 1, where they tried to block a factory and just couldn't matter how much they put into it. Hmm. Yeah, that that it, it, you have to you have to find what works where, and that's where it's difficult. My problem that I was having the other day is the AI cannot comprehend what I want it to do, and even though what I'm doing is fairly simple, I am just telling the driver of truck A go here. Soldiers dismount when it arrives on location. Truck B 
go to secondary location, soldiers dismount upon arrival, and the game, is, the AI is struggling to find what it deems an acceptable path to get there. Hence where my problem last, the other, when I was complaining about it last week, where it's like, what the fuck is going on? It's not listening to me. Even though I gave it very easy to follow instructions. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that does seem to be the way of things, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, the yeah. other thing about Arma modding is you have to have different mods for what you want to do. For instance, the thing I'm working on is a alternate history series where World War II doesn't end. It goes on a ceasefire for a little bit, and then the Allies attack the Soviets because they're putting troops alongside the borders of Europe, or what is freed Europe. Fair enough. So interesting. Yeah, Right. So, Isn't that the thing you commissioned me to do voice acting for? Yes, it is. You have the opening narration, which is the solid um, first... How long is this? Hmm. How long is this audio clip? I do not remember. It's been a while since ah, I recorded yes. it. it. Basically, the first five minutes, four and a half of those being the open narration, is just going to be that narration plastered on top of... Um, Actual stock footage from the world wars and maybe some of Vietnam if I can find ones that are appropriate to cut in, but essentially it's just a five minute summary of what happens. What happens is this Germany in this alternate timeline is not focused on two fronts like they were in ours, they are focused on stopping the advance of the Soviets in the east. So the Allies in the West swoop in in early 1945 and and take Berlin. Germany surrenders, and the Allies create a front against the Russian bo- against the Soviet advance, and they neg- they make negotiations. The Soviets withdraw from the borders of Germany and Austria. And that's where everything sits for a while. In this timeline, we've deemed the the border between liberated Europe and occupied Europe the Red Curtain. Because in our timeline, there there was a border like that, except it split Germany in half, and it was called the Iron Curtain. Hmm. Most famous, the most famous section of which is the Berlin Wall. Right, yeah, I heard about that. The barrier... Between East and West Germany, big thing when they got knocked down. Wasn't yes. that wasn't that a relatively recent occurrence, historically speaking? The knocking down of that wall. Uh, historically speaking, the Berlin the Berlin Fall collapsed in 1991 after the Soviet Empire dissip- after the Soviet Union Ooh. dissipated. Right, that was only five years before I was born. So yeah, fairly recent, relatively <clears throat> speaking. Yeah, and the Germans got the other half of their country back. So. Hmm. Yes. But hmm. in this timeline, the Iron Curtain never happens. It's called the Red Curtain because the Soviets and the fucking Communist Party, for some fucking reason, associate themselves with the color red. And again, this is the time period where um, paranoia against communism and its influences was starting to creep up because... <laughs> the Soviet Union existed and it is one of the most oppressive governments in modern history. Well, I guess without saying. But, essentially, like I said, about a year between mid-1945 and 1946 passes and the Soviets start slowly moving troops to the border of the Red Curtain. So, in a preemptive measure, the United States bombs Stalingrad and Moscow. There's a reason why those two cities were chosen. One is the head of the political infrastructure, and the other is a blow to morale. Stalingrad was a very significant city in World War II because it was seen as this... 
It was named after their leader. They were very intent on keeping the city during World War II, hence why the Battle of Stalingrad went from early 1942 all the way to mid-1943. The Soviets spent a lot of time, manpower, and excruciating amounts of expenses to keep that city from falling to the Germans. So what does America do? They drop a fucking nuke on it. They take the city that they were trying to rebuild and turn it into ash. As we so do. To, to it, make a that's, point. That's this universe's version of the Rush. The Rush yes, bomb. because a lot of things go differently. Japan signs a non-aggression pact before May of <clears> 1945. <throat> so Nagasaki and Hiroshima never happen. So we just bombed Stalingrad and Moscow. And Moscow. So. Hmm. Of course, the intended purpose of bombing Moscow fails because fucking Stalin wasn't there. Instead, he was close to the front and making inspections on the troops. And because of this, he uses it as propaganda to um, basically take China, which was post-communist revolution at this point. And they're like, hey, look what these guys are willing to do to make a point. And China's like, oh, shit. Those guys are bad. We're going to join the Soviets now, which doesn't happen in our timeline. In our the timeline, exact, instead, what happens... Opposite effect of our timeline. It, it has the exact opposite... Well, the exact opposite happens in our timeline. China considered joining the Soviet Union for a while, but a little thing happened in the mid-50s called the Sino-Soviet split, where China's like, hey, we're still communist, but fuck all of you. <laughs> Hmm. And uh, that that's where modern China comes from. <laughs> wow. But it, it, this series takes place about, let's see, 1946 to 1962. Give or take about 15 years. Hmm. In what is known as the continuation war world war ii never ended it just continued and we changed and uh certain factions changed sides so for that there are a lot of mods that we needed mainly in the um vietnam and cold war era as well as world war ii and it is difficult to find things that not only work for those two specific eras, but things that will actually not look like shit on recording. And that is something we ran into in one of the main mods we use for our Vietnam stuff, which is Unsung. Unsung is a Vietnam War mod for Arma 3. It has a lot of good assets. It also has a shit ton of very bad assets. To the point to where when I was looking through it with a group yesterday, we dubbed most of the weapon models as cursed weapons. <laughs> they did not they did not make sense and their models did not fit with reality. A twelve gauge shotgun had the barrel the size of a fucking Coke can. <laughs> I mean I know fucking not nothing like, about not twelve gauge like shotguns, but even I know Coca Cola. <laughs> not like a full Big Coca-Cola can, but like the Coca-Cola mini cans, it was about that fucking big. And let me tell you, a shotgun is not that big. And if it was that big, it would no longer be a shotgun. It would be a fucking grenade launcher. <laughs> and Mika for me's passion for Bolt Storm was creepy. <laughs> yeah. Um, there were some guns that looked like they were textured. Using MS Paint. I saw a lot of very bad weapon models yesterday you're, that I didn't need to know existed. You're going to have to like take some worse, screenshots or something when we're done here and show us, because this just sounds way too good not to see. <laughs> oh, I, I can stream to this thing when we're done, and I'll show you some cursed fucking images. <laughs> oh, great. I can't wait. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> God. But um, another thing, I'm expecting a problem. shotgun that looks like it was made in rock uniform rock. parts. For for instance, the helmets are fucking terrible. They look like garbage, and it looks like they are made out of plastic. I can't use any headgear from Unsung 
The uniforms, however, are very good, and the other equipment is fine. But a lot of it is unusable, and I'm starting to get annoyed of how much unusable stuff there is. Kind of reminds me of that scene in that one movie I watched, where the uniforms are spot on and basically everything else, but it, they're all in a white room. Why is it this white? That's one. I don't think a barrack should be that white. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Another thing is I've kind of written myself into a corner as far as um, equipping certain armies because their um, entire development span of weapons gets halted, mainly the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union created a lot of weapon systems after World War II, mainly the Kalashnikov pattern rifle, which we all know today. That was only developed because they had... They had a uh, so-called era of peace to focus and develop technologies. In this timeline, they don't get that. There's about a seven to six month, a seven to ten month gap between when the war is halted to when it resumes. So the Kalashnikov pattern weapons don't exist yet, which backs me into the corner of I can't use certain other systems. Be, uh, certain other weapons because they also had to have the AK exist before it. Hmm. So the Soviets are still using World War era equipment and maybe a handful of rifles that were developed mid to late war like the SKS <clears throat> because they're that's all they know how to manufacture and they haven't had time to properly <laughs> develop anything else. Hmm. There's also the other... Uh, I actually got into an argument with my brother the other day about this exact subject because he was telling me how my alternate history makes no sense and in his own words is, quote, just fan fiction where I cripple the Soviet Union. I don't need to cripple the Soviet Union in, in alternate history. They did it to themselves just fine in ours. <laughs> I feel like these uh, let, let's debates see. and arguments happen a lot. No, they don't. But my brother, oh. my brother, for whatever reason, does not think that I am competent enough to understand how history works. I ha I know very well how history works, and I can tell you if the world, if we attacked the Soviet Union after World War II, they would have outnumbered us. But that doesn't mean we, they would have won. <laughs> you kind of can't win a war if your people hate you and you can't keep them equipped. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it, there is always a problem with Arma. <laughs> like, it'll just crash ran randomly. I'll be... um. Messing around with things, and up there goes an hour worth of progress because I didn't save and the thing crashed. This is why I save, Fuck. like, every time I do a thing. <laughs> I, I, I have learned to do that. I, 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 I lost an hour I, and a half of progress because R Arma randomly decided to die. I mean, I mean, I just have control. I almost always just have control as, like, my pinky on control and my middle finger on S at all times, so no matter what I'm doing, I can just instantly just bat to save, just every time I move something like a fucking inch, just I have a feeling telling you just put a tree, like, save, put another tree, save. Well, I mean, to be fair, like, it's generally not quite that extensive, but I do save very frequently whenever I'm working in something where saving is required. Like an RPG maker, when I'm working on the Chronicles of Eno video game adaptation, or whenever I'm writing in something that isn't Google Docs. Because Google Docs does that for me, bless its soul. Fucking Google Docs. <laughs> no matter how small of a change, we will make an automatic save to your documents. <laughs> I mean, it's very convenient for me. It means I don't have to worry about saving every 10 seconds, and I can just focus on writing my two to 4,000 word chapters of depression and death, bloodshed, and oftentimes weird amounts of cute snuggliness. Also, speaking of trends in writing, Tom, what the fuck is up with your trend of using adoption as a story? narrative <laughs> he's he's got a point there Tom. yeah i, I just thought yeah, why are you he's... adopted no i mean i'm not i mean why do you use adoption 
much fucking I mean, change soaring on little, little wings, wings a perfect rose what the fuck <laughs> he's got point there tom he does. He he was. All my main characters are adopted. Well, yeah, no, but I, I, I've the... made many a more story than just those three. Dear Sparkle in the Darkness, there was no adoption there. Uh, no. War has changed. No adoption in that, no. I don't think. Not um, really. There was, he yeah. also wrote some other stories before he ever did any of the ones we were talking about here, <laughs> like a Star Trek crossover and another one that featured a romance between Twilight and Luna. I don't think there was any adoption in those. Nope. <laughs> Okay, maybe not like every story, but like most, you do like, tend to use it. It is a trend you've picked ones. up lately. Uh, is there something that. you would like to tell the council? <laughs> to be it fair, you, to be fair, it makes you bastards have feels. To be yeah, and to be I fair, use. I don't even have a problem with it. I only noticed <laughs> just now when you the, pointed it. I out. I just noticed now. There's no, there's no real problem with it. And he just basically uses it to make us feel sad and. <laughs> I mean, to be he... and to be fair, the the whole notion of like you know adopting orphaned kids and that's a very good message to spread around. Yeah. And so good thing to replicate in story. So fucking... I. <laughs> it's also fucking what? yes. Someone had yeah, to, also, someone, also someone had to, fuck to make and... those orphans. <laughs> I mean, sorry, sorry little wings. The whole, the whole thing was I'm like about, I'm not not sorry. Rather, turn on. down an orphanage. What are they gonna do? Tell their parents. Whoa, so be it. Up the fuck down. That's, down. that's awful. Shit behind. That is awful. I didn't even hear it, and I can tell it was awful. Yeah. Oh, about to go rob an orphanage. What are they gonna do? Tell their parents? Oh, well, You're no, they'll tell the caretakers. Star. That's yeah, horrible. But back on topic with the whole per the perfect roses example. Like one, as you said, it's. A good message. Two, it's an interesting narrative. And three, the whole premise of the story was I wanted a griffin ra raised in the pony environment of Cantalot, and that necessitated that kind of storyline. So, mm -hmm. yeah. as far as like, uh, I mean, I've only written one series of stories where there's like an actual adoption thing going on flat out. Um, and that was in that you know that's the little flashes series. The little where, flashes. Yeah, where Rainbow was adopted by Celestia after her parents got crushed by falling debris I mean, in Baltimore. Also, cute bugger. Right, BB. But he wasn't an orphan there. He, he was adopted, yes, but he was, but but he wasn't an orphan because both of his parents were alive and he even reunited with them at the end. Still, Still kind of an orphan. Kind of, sorta, but not really. More of a refugee, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More of a refugee type situation. Isolated from his family without really knowing who they are, but they're still alive out there and hoping to get him back, and and that's what happened at the end. So more of a refugee, yeah. That's a more accurate portrayal. Uh, also, thanks. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> well, the, well, Bug in the Basement has been out for how long now? I'm for you. I'm for you. Patronize me, you little shit. I will in patronize fairness. the fuck out of you, man. You've had all the time uh. in the world. You're a patron Internet. of mine. You should have been able to listen to this shit already. <laughs> As it did. Exactly. In that fairness, besides the point. No, it is in not. In fairness, <laughs> Gajaramas, you and Tom put out so much shit, it's hard for any of us to keep freaking up to date. I know the feeling, because I'm putting the rest of his stories on Relayer for a while, so I can read something fucking else. <laughs> also, including <laughs> human nature, which I really need to do, but I've been... Living on the burnout for quite a while, right. so yeah, I've been on a little bit of a burnout too. I, yeah. I still need to get. I mean, I mean, he stopped reading change because he's burnt out to the point where I, I, in the end, I was just free up to tell him the entire plot of New Kingdom to get his input on it. <laughs> you know, honestly, it got. I've never, honestly, Queen of the Hive was probably one of the first stories he's actually did an actual reading of that where he well, just said, "I need to stop." Yeah. Uh, oh, no, yeah. there's another one, but we don't what? talk about that. Well, we can now <laughs> no, because no, I openly I mean, marked one the that playlist. He, one that he knew was freaking he was going to get back to. We all know he's never going to get back to that other one. <laughs> you can say its name, man. It's been long enough. It's forgiveness pending. Obviously. And I will never... And I will never forgive you for abandoning it. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I'm you, just kidding. I, I'm just I, I'm kidding. Pretty we've sure heard, you joined long heard. after I stopped that one. 
I say we heard, we we've all heard the reasoning. I know it's just fun to poke it poke it at you every now and then. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean to be honest, yeah, it is a shame, but it's a dead shame as well. I mean, that was that was uh, memory pending, in that was the first stories that I ever found on your channel. So. Oh shit, really? Yeah. I thought you joined well after I was done with those. No, I mean the the original reading of Human Nature is when I found it. And and that was because I was bored, and I decided to take a gamble with a YouTube search. I mean, <laughs> well, look I just, where that took you. <laughs> I mean, I just and freaking, here I am. I just freaking found it. Me. I freaking found it with forgiveness pending mostly, and then mm -hmm. I didn't learn about Patreon or really look into your channel until uh, Bug in the Herd. I found it. I found it because he put me say, "Hey, I'm." I want to maybe no, do a reading of change, should. and I will likely will never finish it. And then, all like the multiple many years later, and here he is. Like, I did two bloody full story readings of this. I'm so burnt out. God damn it! I mean, you know, to be fair, it, of if you look back to your reading of change, isn't that probably one of your most viewed? It readings? is. It, it is. And and the reason, Tom, why I said I probably would never finish it. We were going over time at this point, by the way. But the reason I said I probably wouldn't finish it when I first contacted you to do the reading of change um, is because that had been the pattern for a while, you know, for one thing, you know, with forgiveness, pending and all that, my workflow, I was still using audacity, which is incredibly inefficient compared to what I use now. Um, but also I was still dealing with uh, my depression at the time, which was the big thing that was yeah. sucking all of the power out of my willingness to do readings, but I was on the tail end of it. So hmm. I asked to do the reading of change. You gave me permission. I started on it. And then like on the sidelines in rapid succession, the crippling depression I'd been suffering from for years and years finally began to go away. And so suddenly so can I take credit for that since I wrote change? No, because it no. had absolutely nothing oh. to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> you were completely unrelated yeah. to the events that let me climb out of my depression. It just no. coincided chronologically. No, that's a whole <laughs> other story that I am not getting into on this show. No, may I say something quick? You may. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah I think since we're speaking about to... oh. <laughs> let him talk. Okay. Wait, you talk. I try it one more time. <laughs> You know oh, what? No, I think I this is the time. I'm just saying, <laughs> one basically, this is what I'm say. Okay. Since you're all speaking about Zajamas, the first thing I ever watched and going to, and also the first fic I've ever completed, was that one with Chrysalis and him. Which is saying something. Which is Bug in the Herd. Brony. Yes, Bug in the Herd, and, and it's thanks to that also became the first Patreon. I Can I ask, why do you read these things if you don't, you're not even a Brony? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I mean, but this is the Watch thing with me. Oh, God damn it. It's all on Netflix. <laughs> all nine seasons, plus what else you need to consume no, to no. understand any we, of this. No, 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 no. Sub it, sub it, sub it. Down. We respect each other's <laughs> fandoms and non-fandoms here. This is the safe space. That being <laughs> said, I do act, that being said, I do actually I was going to explain Sylvia. before he just... <laughs> end it, end it, please. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, we've been going, we've, we've been going for three minutes over time. So uh, yeah. thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, so much for tuning into the... Day, shut Sylvia. the hell up. I'm doing the outro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, so much for tuning into this episode of Jibber Jabber. We'll see you next time. Keep listening, people. Bye bye. Look at ass. Bye. Wars suck. Orphans.